Welcome back to the channel. So I'm finally getting to finish the wind turbine whirly gig project. So here you can see the uh, turbine blades. And if we go around here, we can see some of the other parts. So what I'm going to do in this video is put it together, show you guys some of the assembly, what's, uh, you know, what's in the design here. And then hopefully it all goes together and actually functions. So let's start there. So the whole assembly is going to pivot on this piece right here, which will mount into a one inch pipe, uh, which I hope to, you know, mount in the ground and support this thing. So this piece here, I've already put on a needle roller uh, type bearing, thrust bearing. You can see it here. Um, <clears throat> there's another one on top. And those are the pieces there, and then this piece will assemble on the top. And we'll go ahead and do that real quick. The way the design on this is, you know, again, I'll show you here the bearing. If you can see that. Three pieces. And slides on. And then this piece here, it's a bronze bushing on the inside, which goes on top of this. And then I'm using a wave spring to kind of preload everything. And then, same as the bottom, there's a plate, a set of rollers, and another plate. And then I'll go ahead and put it all together with a snap ring. So now it's all together with the snap ring on top, and this spins freely. And this will mount in the bottom of the whirly gig and allow it to point into the wind as it turns. So if you're looking to do something, that's why I'm kind of showing you guys this. Some ideas of, uh, you know, how you can make a pivot. Here's the main body, and this will actually, you know, just bolt to the bottom. Um, and then the whole thing can turn into the wind. The next thing I wanted to look at was the pieces on the rear. We're going to do a sub-assembly here. So we've got this one... Um, piece that goes inside the body. I've already pre-assembled the spur gear on there with the bevel gear. The bearings are installed in it. So that's what that looks like. And then the other rear piece here, I've got the bearings installed. Another little idler shaft. I'll show you how that works. And what we'll do first is these two pieces um, bolt together. So let me go ahead and do that. So I've got everything assembled here. It just loose on there. I haven't tightened the bolts. Uh, why I left it loose is there's a bearing on this side and then there's a bearing on this side. Uh, we're going to drive the shaft, the main shaft, through those two and make sure it's in perfect alignment before I tighten those down. So let's go ahead and do that next. So here's the main shaft. I've already installed the spur gear in position that I wanted it to be on the shaft. So we'll go ahead and slide it through here uh, into the housing assembly in the rear. And it should mesh. Okay. That's a good sign. I didn't screw that up. The gears are meshing. So on the other side here, we'll go ahead and install. There's two more spur gears that go on the back. So here it is with the two spur gears on the back. Uh, again, they fit. Uh, you never know. I could have made a mistake, but it looks good. It actually feels really good. Runs smooth. So you got these spur gears on the one side and a bevel gear. And on the back, you got the two... Uh, one of them's got this pin in it, which you'll see later how that works. The next piece I'm going to put together is this rear cover that supports the Scotch yoke mechanism. And that yoke, you'll see how this works. Um, what it does is it'll transfer the rotary motion into linear motion, is what I'm looking for. So uh, if it all <laughs> works and it calculates out well the way I did it, hopefully it all fits and works. So let's go ahead and see if we can get this piece onto the assembly. Okay, so far everything's going together. Uh, I've got the Scotch yoke mechanism on there and let's see if it works. So you can see as it turns, it goes up and down. And the reason for the gears is just to slow this down so it's not so fast. Uh, in a heavy wind it would be too fast of a spin. And it gives me more torque, so this will run in a, you know, in a smaller wind and still turn. Okay. I've got the main housing in uh, my vise here, so 
Uh, we'll use that as support and go from there and put all the pieces on to the main housing from here on in. Um, I'm not going to put that bottom piece on because it's going to interfere uh, with the vise right now. So that'll go on as the last step. So let's put some pieces onto the main body here. I've got the piece that we subassembled uh, earlier here. And the next step, I'll go ahead and install it into the main housing. Should just slide in. Okay. And then I'm just going to go ahead and temporarily, or not snug them down all the way, there's screws that lock down into this. But I'll go ahead and <clears throat> leave it loose for now. So it's in here, it's still loose, can flop around. Uh, but we kind of somewhat, and there's a screw on the other side. I'll put one of those in also. Here I've got the front bearing housing that I pre-assembled and I put the bearings in. Um, so it also fits into the main housing. We'll go ahead and install that. And there's also four screws that hold it down. For right now, I'll just go ahead and put them in loose. So if I have to, you know, we can just loosen them up and let everything self-align. So there's four all the way around. Okay, that went together. So let's see if it still turns. Yes, we're still in the running. Now, I'm not lubricating anything now uh, because I'm going to take this apart again to paint it in the final step. So nothing's lubricated. Uh, that'll all happen at the end. So, so far, so good. The next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and install the main uh, part of the machine here. That, uh, and it's supported through these two brackets on the bottom. So I'll go ahead and bolt those up and then we'll put the machine onto the main body. All right. There's a look at the main part of the machine. So let's go ahead and get that onto the body. So I got the brackets on the bottom of the machine base and we'll go ahead and I'm just going to temporarily put it on here and I'll show you why. There's some things that we have to align first uh, before we can actually bolt this whole thing down. Actually what I'm going to do next is actually um, put the scotch yoke part of it in place here. Um, so it should just mount. Okay, let's make sure everything's still good. And then what happens here is I've got this rod that'll go through a hole here and it threads into a into the yoke right there. So I'll go ahead and tighten that up and we'll continue on. The next part here, there's a hole in the bottom of the machine base and that has to slide over this rod. And we'll go ahead and do that. And so far so good, all the holes lined up. Doesn't look like anything's gonna rub. So, so far so good. The next parts we're going to have to install are these bronze guides that I made. So in the main housing, there was no way I could drill a hole all the way up through this. So instead of drilling a hole, what I did is made these two bronze guide bushings, I guess. Um, so we'll go ahead and put them on. So they just slide on. We'll just put them on this way at first. And then we got to put this piece on that's going to drive the mechanism at the top. This is why I left everything loose. So to get this on, I'm just going to tilt the main machine over and just thread this uh, bronze piece on here. Now that I have it threaded on, I'll go ahead and bring up these guide bushings into where they uh, will stay. So there's one. And... Let's get the second one in there. There's two. So now I've got support for the rod and this piece will be able to glide up and down. So let's go ahead and snug this down a little bit so um, <clears throat> it just doesn't move on us. So I got some of the bolts in there and let's, you know, here you can take a look. So just snugged up, nothing's tightened so far. And let me go ahead and turn the main shaft and see if it's still good. Looks good, it's still functioning. Nothing's binding, it's moving real easy. So here's the back end. The next piece we'll go ahead and install is this pivot arm. And that goes up here. 
and fits into the pin there. Let's see if I can do it. Okay, so it's in there. Let's see if this functions like it should. Uh, looks good. So there it is. Next piece that I want to install is the actual spindle. Um, that goes in the slot here. And once I have that in the slot, I'll also install the back cover after that. This is what it looks like. It's pocketed out. So it'll clear that rod that we saw in the back. So that'll go in the back here. And then there's also a front cover plate that'll go on this side to cover everything up. So it's hard to do that with two hands. So um, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and do it and then uh, show you what that looks like when it's assembled. So I got all the screws in and uh, if I turn it, everything still moves, nothing's binding. So, so far so good. So we'll move on to the next step here. Uh, it's to install this little arm, which is gonna go here and that will move the spindle up and down. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll bring you guys back. Got the arm installed, went on pretty good. So let's go ahead and give the shaft a turn. See what happens. Looks good. So everything's clearing, nothing's binding again. I think we're good to move on to the next step. Next step is to install our operator here. I've already gone ahead and bolted the brackets to them uh, so we can put them on the base here. So I'm just going to go ahead and bolt them down. The next step's a little tricky. Uh, I got to put this shaft. I'm going to mount it through this bronze bushing. And then once I get that in there, I have to get this little tiny gear onto that shaft and to mesh with the gear inside there. So let me bring you guys back once I get that done. So I got it on there without dropping the gear down in the gearbox. I don't know how well you can see. Um, let's see. And I've dropped the shaft down below, so it gives me some room up here to install the upper half here. So we'll go ahead and install this upper rod support. I'll show you that. So this is the upper rod support. It's got two bronze bushings in it. And what I'm going to have to do is get this on the shaft here and then slide it up to this position and bolt it on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. The next part that I have to do is this little handle, crank handle with gear assembly. Actually, will come in from this side here uh, through and the gear will be coming through. And then I need to mount the little gear on top of this shaft and get everything to mesh correctly. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll bring you guys back, show you what it looks like. Okay, finally got these things on. Uh, I took a little going back and forth to get it adjusted and I think I'll still have to work on that too once in the final assembly. But here you can see the gears on the one side and the handle on the other side. And then I don't know how Easy it'll be to see inside here, but I got those gears there too. So let's go ahead and give it a turn. And yeah, so far so good. Everything lined up and is still moving without binding. Everything looks good in the bottom. So let's continue on. We'll put the arms on the operator and see if all that's going to work. Okay, the arms, you have the upper arm which will mount right to the shoulder. And then the lower arm mounts to the upper arm using these brass pieces that I made with some set screws in the middle. So let me go ahead and put the arms on. So all the arms are on, uh, everything seemed to fit. So let's go ahead and give it a turn and see how this side works. So, so far the movements are good, no binding. So, so far. Uh, looks like it's going to work. Uh, let's go along around to the other side and see if that, I see it from here that it is turning. You can see the gears are moving. So let's look at the other side. So here we are on the other side. Let's give it a turn. And yeah, so far so good. The spindle's moving up and down. I still got to put a drill bit in it. 
and he's turning the crank there. So let's go ahead and put the turbine blades on there and see if it'll actually work. So here it is assembled. Uh, what I've got going is I've got a fan blowing over the blades just to simulate it being outside. Uh, everything's looking really good. If you see the, the turbine blades are really, you know, um, running well. Everything's concentric. Nothing's running out. Everything looks good. Um, I do have a couple of the covers off here so we can see inside. Um, I don't have the swivel pivot on the bottom because it would interfere with the vise right now. Um, the rear covers off that we'd put on the rear here so we could see inside. And I also do have a cover that will go over these gears right here um, to cover them. So <clears throat> let's take a look here. You can see everything running. Let's get in closer. You can see the gears <clears throat> in the bottom. And as we go up, you can see everything there. And there he is drilling holes. And on the back, <clears throat> you can see the Scotch yoke mechanism, how that's working. So that's transferring the rotary motion to linear. And if you watch the first part of the video, you can see the rest of the linkages that are involved in that. So, <clears throat> overall, looking good. Let's take a look at the other side. So on this side, he's turning the hand crank. And that's actually working really well, too. So it looks like it's, everything's going to work. So the next time you see this, <clears throat> like I said, I didn't lubricate anything and I plan on painting some of these pieces. So hopefully the next time uh, you'll see it painted outside mounted to some kind of tower. Um, so definitely stay tuned to the channel for updates on this project, but I also have quite a few other projects uh, in line. So definitely uh, subscribe to the channel and come back and uh, look for more stuff. So thanks for watching and see you soon.